everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. Today I wanted to sit down and share my thoughts on the latest episode of American Horror Story. It is in fact season 8 episode 1. This time around the season's theme is Apocalypse. If you've seen the show before you'd know that every single year there's a different theme and a different setting. This time around it's about the end of the world, so pretty different to what they've done in the past. And the title of the episode is The End, so a little bit funny considering it's the first episode of the season and the calling at the end, but it is about the end of the world after all, so it's just setting everything up for the rest of the season I suppose. In the past on my channel I have made a few videos about TV shows before. Normally they've been on finales of certain seasons, including American Horror Story, and in those videos I've normally done more of a live reaction. However, this time around I did want to watch the show and really sum up my thoughts before sharing them with you. So I've just made a few notes on my phone. I've just finished watching the episode so everything else is still pretty fresh in my mind and I'm just going to get started. What I'm going to do now is begin with this little recap and share my thoughts as I go along. The episode begins in a hair salon where Coco, or Leslie Grossman, is getting her hair done by Evan Peters, and I think his name is Mr. Gallant, although I don't know if anyone referred to him by name in this episode. If they did, I definitely missed it. He's doing her hair, and Coco is also talking to her personal assistant, Mallory, played by Billy Lord. At this point she gets a video call from her dad who is telling her about an approaching ballistic missile that he knows is going to kill himself and the rest of her family. They're in Hong Kong I believe and he explains that there is a plane with four available seats waiting to take her to safety. Unfortunately her family perishes in a separate blast. It's very easy to see that this is obviously happening all over the world and people are starting to panic. So from here, Coco and Mallory make their way to a private jet to get out of there. Coco says that Mallory can take her brother's spot on the plane, and at the same time Gallant is going to get his grandmother, because he also wants to take her on the plane with him, all unbeknownst to Coco at this point. While Coco was on the way to the airport, she did call her husband Brock, and he was only in a little part of this episode, and I'm guessing no more episodes to come. She was just explaining the situation to him, and he did try to get to the airport, but didn't get very far. I thought it was funny as well how she mentioned a little clause in their relationship, where either one of them could sort of just pull the plug at any time and she said you're free to see other people but really both of them knew that by her flying away and leaving him in San Francisco he was going to die. Now all four parts of this little group do meet at the airport and Gallant says to Coco that he's got to be there to fix her hair and he wants to bring the grandmother since there's just another spot on the plane and she says yes. There was a little bit of trouble at the airport with people trying to stop them and keep the plane there or I'm assuming try to use the plane for themselves but they did manage to get up off the ground and start to fly away. So as these four people are in the private jet trying to escape one of them mentions they don't know where they're going, so Mallory heads to the cockpit to see who's there and ask them where she finds no pilots, so we can assume that it's maybe being autopiloted. She does mention that there's no pilots, which does seem to freak everyone out a little bit, justifiably so, but the panic on that subject is pretty short-lived considering almost immediately the blast goes off and it shakes the plane a little bit, but we can assume it levels out because they're in the episode later on. And then the opening credits begin. I did notice a lot of images from the season 1 and also season 3 credits, which makes a fair bit of sense since it's a crossover season this time around. There were certain pictures and certain themes from season 1 and season 3's credits that popped up, along with some new ones that are more to do with the apocalypse. After the opening credits end, it does show us a family that we haven't seen up until this point, and I think they were celebrating the eldest son getting into college or something like that, and at this point the father turns on the news and shows them the news that everybody else so far has already seen about the end of the world and bombs about to drop. Obviously they're very worried and scared, and they do get interrupted by a car pulling up and then a knock at their front door. The people that were knocking explain that they are there to take the son Timothy away saying that they know he is special and that he has been chosen to survive. I love the way they explained how they found this out as well. They said that they got his DNA from an Ancestry website. We've all heard that conspiracy before. I just thought that was a little funny. But due to this, they do take Timothy away. Obviously, his parents are protesting. They take Timothy to a little waiting cell. It looks kind of like a big cage or like a jail cell and put him in there saying that he'll be safe. And he sees someone else in the cell above him. It is a young woman and she says her name is Emily and that they took her out of jail because they also said she was special. While they're talking, it's pretty obvious that the blast goes off at the same time because their cells start to shake and Timothy starts to express worry for his family. All right, so quick change of scenery. I know everything probably looks super different, but I had to move to the opposite end of my house because my neighbors were making so much noise and I couldn't even hear myself think. Anyway, I think it was up to the stage of explaining that Timothy and Emily were being moved to a different location in a van. And when they pulled up to their new location, they were wearing hazmat suits 
and being led by someone in a gas mask. They also saw two people not wearing any gas masks or hazmat suits being executed by two other people outside of the building they were heading to. They then descended into the bunker and were decontaminated before removing their hazmat suits. They then met Venable, played by Sarah Paulson, who explained why they were there and that it was basically something that was all orchestrated by a group of people called the Cooperative. She also explained that there are different classes out of the people who survived, so purple, which were the more elite and rich or special, like Timothy and Emily. And there are also grey people who are servants for the purple. Venable also told Timothy and Emily that they needed to get ready for dinner and that it was a big deal where they were living at the moment. And a quick side note, when Timothy was getting ready and hopping out of the shower, someone had wiped into the shower steam or moisture on the wall of the shower 666 and I couldn't quite remember or make out what they were saying but there were strange whispers going on so I might need to go back and rewatch that scene just to see what they were saying but it was a little bit creepy and it will be interesting to know who left that little message. Now everyone else in the bunker was waiting for dinner and we can see they were all wearing period costumes or old fashioned dress. Some of the people waiting there hadn't been introduced yet on the show but we can see the four people who made it in on the private plane were waiting and they're all classed as purple except for Mallory who has been designated as a grey person and she doesn't seem happy about it one little bit. Now at this point Timothy arrives ready for dinner and he says hello to Dinah Stevens who is played by Adina Porter, and they discussed the fact that she was an actress before everything went down. For dinner, they all served a little jelly cube, which apparently has all of the vitamins necessary for them, but is obviously not very filling. And Coco's not very happy about this, so she does have a little outburst, saying that she wishes they had more food, and something about she thought that for the amount that she paid, Gordon Ramsay should be there cooking for them. As this is happening, Venable walks up behind her, and she does stop talking because she can hear Venable's cane, but it's too late, she did hear everything she had to say and she subsequently slaps Coco. Venable then goes on to say that they received news by a carrier pigeon up on ground level and the message said something along the lines of there are no more governments, pretty much just corpses and decay up on ground level and that other outposts have been overrun. At dinner, Ms Mead, played by Kathy Bates, starts to scan the guests at the table worried about any radioactive contamination as they believe someone has snuck above ground which is against the rules of the bunker. So Ms Mead scans all the guests, she walks around the table and her Geiger counter indicates that it is Gallant and also Stu, who we find out his name later on at the table. So two men are grabbed and hauled away to be decontaminated. They are then scanned again, it seems like Gallant is fine, but unfortunately Stu set up the Geiger counter again and Ms Mead shoots him. At this point Ms Mead goes to meet Venable and they are both wearing purple class outfits, which they don't normally wear. They discuss a few different things, mainly consisting around the fact of how important they are over everybody else in the bunker, the fact that Ms Mead rigged the Geiger counter and pretty much that they're having lots of fun torturing the other guests in the bunker. Later on that night at dinner, instead of their regular jelly cube, they are all served a hot bowl of stew. Literally, they do discover this and most of them are horrified, especially Stu's boyfriend. I can't remember his name, but I'm assuming it's his boyfriend. He was very upset, understandably. After dinner that night, there is a little bit of arguing about the Stu Stu. However, things do settle down a little bit when they realise that the music has stopped. I don't think I mentioned yet, but the same song or the same sort of music was playing over and over and over, again in the bunker, driving them crazy, but the music does change to there's got to be a morning after, and they take that as a sign that help is on the way. They're all super excited, they think that they're being rescued, and then a title card pops up saying 18 months has passed. They're still in the bunker, listening to that new same song. Over this time, Timothy and Emily have gotten closer, they've formed a relationship. They do need to keep it secret though, and have a sneaky little kiss every week, because one of the rules in the bunker that they were told at the start was no copulating without authorization, and that's why the two people they saw when entering the bunker were executed. Also because of how much time has passed, they are running out of their food sources and it looked like on their plates their jelly cubes were half of what they used to be, but Venable also told them that they will only have one meal a day consisting of the little jelly cubes. So obviously no one's really happy about this, especially Gallant who kind of goes off, he's not happy, he wants food, and at the same time an alarm signals saying that there is a breach on the grounds. A horse-drawn carriage approaches and we find out that the man travelling on it is Michael Langdon, the baby from season one, the Antichrist. He then descends into the bunker to meet Venable. He seemed to know who she was and same with him, although it seemed like they had never met before. Michael tells her that this outpost is eventually going to be overrun like all of the others, but there is a sanctuary where people will have a much better chance of survival and he's there to pick the people who will come along with him. And that's the end of the episode. So a lot of things have been set up on what we'll see through the rest of the season. I feel like looking back to the trailer as well, 
a lot of the things that were shown in the trailer were happening in this first episode. Obviously everyone will need to deal with the fallout from all of the bombs dropping and of course now there's the option to go to a sanctuary so I'm sure everyone will want to go if they find out about it but then again if the sanctuary does exist at all Michael is the Antichrist we know this so how safe can it really be? Also it's very interesting that this first episode is done without seeing any of the previous characters from season one and three even though I do know they were shown in a lot of the trailers for this season. Of course the character of Michael was at the end of season one even though he was just a baby and a toddler we haven't seen any of the rest of the Harmons or also anyone from Coven so it will be very interesting to see them especially Constance considering she is technically Michael's mom or she raised him so it will be interesting when she pops up if he is sort of taking care of her or being good to her considering what she did for him. Also in the trailers, it seemingly showed several witches who are back from the dead. So three that come to mind that I saw in the trailer that we saw die in Coven include Myrtle, Misty, and Madison. And they're all back in the trailers. So it'll be interesting to see how they're back if Cordelia resurrected them or if something else happened. In one of the trailers, we also see Madison speak her iconic line of, you thought you'd seen the last of me. I do wonder if maybe she will be saying that to Fiona is that too obvious? Who knows? I have heard that Jessica Lange is back to play Constance. I don't know if she will be playing Fiona as well. I don't think I've read that anywhere, but it'll be interesting to see who Madison is talking to. One thing I also noted down that I'm interested to know is who is in that rubber man costume? He wasn't in the episode, but he was in the promos as well. And it doesn't make much sense to me on why he would be in the bunker with everybody. Nevertheless, I'm very excited to see what happens and find out everything. There aren't too many thoughts that I have at the start, just because there's only one episode down. So I don't really have any predictions as such, but I'm just very excited to see what happens from here. If you watched the episode as well, please let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd love to chat with you or hear your opinions. I'll do my best to try and do more videos like this if I can every week. I don't know if that's possible, but I'll certainly try. It definitely will make it a lot easier if I know that this is definitely a wanted video, so give me a thumbs up if you do want to see more videos like this. But for now, I did want to thank you for watching the video today. I do hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you did, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you next time. Bye!